Thank you for tuning in to part 2. In this part we explore a lift generator room, then a look at the massive gearless machines of the high-rise lifts, all installed in the late 1970s. The building has 23 floors with both high-rise and low-rise lifts. The floors served and the location of the motor rooms can be seen in my plan on the left. Previously, we entered the building through the basement. Being a Mr. Matt and Mr. Che video, we're talking quality, not quantity, to bring you a really interesting and informative video. A couple of floors up from the basement is the main lift lobby, where you'll find both high and low rise lifts. Here we discovered that the low rise lifts were intact, but the high rise lifts, the shafts were almost completely empty and appear to have been knocked out in the pit. In this part, we're going straight up to the roof to have a look at the high-rise lift motor room via this opening into the main stairwell. On the roof is the motor room and a very rare and unique iconic transistor controller. This is the floor below, the generator room. AC to DC generators are old, obsolete technology. Standard AC lift motors can only run at two speeds, which is not suitable for high-rise installations. To get faster, more controllable lift speeds before the 1980s required these generators. The AC to DC generator has two sides to it. On one end is a traditional three-phase motor. On the other end is a DC voltage generator. When the AC motor spins, it turns the DC generator, which then supplies a DC voltage for the main lift motors. The advantages are to run the lifts at higher speeds and to precisely control the acceleration and deceleration in and out of floors. The disadvantages are these are noisy. They require a lot of maintenance and consume a lot of electricity, as they must be running at all times during lift operation. Very quickly, here is a clip of a couple in operation. <laughs>
What we are about to explore is a system that I've never seen before. Lift machinery from the 1970s was usually relay controlled, with cabinets full of relays and mechanical devices. The lifts in Five Ways Tower were designed in the 1970s, during a transition from relays to Programmable Logic Controllers, or PLCs. The Five Ways Tower lifts are neither relay or PLC logic. Here we are in transistor territory, just over a thousand of them. They are not mounted on circuit boards and there isn't a microprocessor in sight. This is a very rare system and you'll be incredibly lucky to find one working today. Well, this isn't necessarily true, which brings me to my announcement. I'll explain a little more about my collaboration with the Lift Dragon later, but for now let's get back on with the explore. When you watch the next part of the Five Ways Tower video, I can only make assumptions to how it works. Just like a transistor grid. So it is almost analog, but it's like the first stages of inputs and outputs, but instead they're making decisions by plugging these in, and then these are the effectively the relays, but they're transistors. So that goes obviously with the cover on into there. And slightly different. That one can be opened actually. I'll have a look inside there in a minute. 
what is on the other side. These are going to be transistors along the top bit there. There's transistors on the other side. Wow. Put it back in just in case they ever want to get it working again. Highly unlikely. That's one of these connectors where you get a wire and you just either put it in a tool and it wraps the end of it around a post. Insert the wire into the smaller of the two holes at the end of the tool. Then place the tool on the wire wrapping terminal. Turn the tool clockwise to wrap the stripped wire. It's that easy. Your wire wrapping is now complete. Five volt. Oh, there's a bulb holder. There's nothing behind there. there. Must be some lamps behind here. Nope. There's a lamp. Huh. Oh, I wonder if that'll come off. Yes! It does come off.
Oh, it's hinged. Oh, what the hell? There's nothing on the back of it. Someone's had this away already. And there's one or two lamps left. <laughs> one down there. Let's remember that one. Wow. Old school light bulb panel. Let's see. It's only power supply. Wicked. I can't believe I missed that. lever on the one up top there. It's down one side. I think it's missing on this one. It normally fits on on there. I think that releases the brake. electrics are for the brake unless they're missing I mean, obviously that is the brake but where's the solenoid or whatever operates it yeah. it's probably gone weird what's that was a cage yeah. oh yeah see that's the ropes that go up to the other one why wouldn't they put the machine there and this is no room for it. Why did they put it up there? Weird. In part three, we have a quick look at the window cleaning machine and a building management cabinet. We find the untouched lift cars from lifts two and three and take a closer look at them. Then on to floor 14, which is the location of the low rise lift motor room. This turns out to be a little more intact than the high rise lifts. The Lift Dragon is familiar with the rare Aconic lift system and has provided me with a vast amount of information. It's a truly remarkable system and way ahead of its time in the 1970s. Remember, please pay the Lift Dragon a visit. 
the Mr. Matt and Mr. J and the Lift Dragon have decided to collaborate to bring you a video that attempts to explain the Aconic lift system in more detail. A link to his working Aconic lift video is in the top right. A lot of time and effort goes into filming and editing these videos. Quality, not quantity, is our motto. If you've enjoyed watching our video, please consider subscribing to the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che channel. Thank you very much for watching.